Hello and welcome to our second session for Idea Clock. So my name is Ida Jimenez and I'm really excited to be here with everyone, um, Suj and Amy. But before we officially get started, um, so like I said, my name is Ida and I work with the Bunsi team where I just have the absolute honor and just privilege of working with a lot of educators just around the globe. Um, and so as a result, we have the opportunity to really be able to share just different experiences and just ideas to make learning fun and engaging for all of the learners. And that's kind of like what stemmed, you know, this entire session, right, um, of Idea Clock, where our hope is to actually have different educators actually sharing other ideas that you could take back to really improve your practice. But enough about me. Let me pass it over to you, Suj, to get us started here. Hi everyone, I'm Suj. I'm also really excited to be here. So I am the voice behind the social media at Bunsy. And uh, a fun fact about me is, you know, we were just talking about this before we went live, but a fun fact about me is that the last, you know, TV series that I've engaged with is The Walking Dead. So just wanted to share that with everyone, I guess. But also I'm just really excited to be here and also to exchange ideas about how Bunsy can be used and, you know, see like where that inspiration comes from. Um, and I have the absolute honor to introduce our guest speaker, Amy Starr today. So Amy, do you wanna share something about yourself? Fun fact about me, um, I am an identical twin. My twin sister is also in education. She is a wonderful oh. counselor in Houston. Her name is Diane Wilson and uh, she's pretty awesome. Oh my God, I actually didn't know that about you. That's yeah, amazing. I'm a twin. <laughs> Learn something new every day, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so I know you have a lot of different ideas um, as a tech coach. You want to share a little bit about your background and how you've, I guess, come to use Buncee in your um, years of using it, really? Sure, yeah. I discovered Buncee after I was out of the classroom. So it was my first year as an instructional coach. So I've been using it mainly as, um, as an instructional coach. And so the ideas that I'm going to share tonight is how adult learners can use Buncee uh, to impact their journey and also um, give ideas to other educators as well. Um, I think it's my fifth year wow. that I've been using Buncee. Um, it's one of my favorite creation tools, um, but I'm very excited about sharing how I use it as a coach. All right. That's awesome. I mean, I'm totally excited to hear your thoughts. Yeah. It's going to be so All right. Exciting. Can I go ahead and share my screen? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you a Buncee board full of some awesome ideas. Can y'all see my screen? <laughs> yeah, um, so I'll add, I'm going to add your screen to the stream after you uh, okay. after you change it over to the board. There go. Awesome, okay, there you go. Okay, Perfect. you can see it now? Yes, you can see it now. Okay, so this is a Buncee board. If you're not familiar with the Buncee board, it's a great way to organize your Buncees into one spot. And so I utilize that feature so I could have all my ideas to share with you um, in one place. I'm gonna kind of skip around um, to show you some of these different ideas. I'm gonna start with this one. This is a Buncee business card. So I created this, I wanna say it was Michael Dresick um, that was the one that inspired me to create this. I actually have his physical business card that he printed from Buncee. I think he used Vistaprint on my desk over there, but this is just a great way for me to share um, a little bit about myself in a digital format. And so I use this with every single presentation that I give. This is typically my first slide um, to help me introduce myself. So it includes um, all of my ambassador stickers at the very top, some of the things that I'm proud of, such as being an, an MIE expert and a Skype master teacher. And then it has a little bit about me. So this is a great place for me to share a little bit about myself. Like they said, my name is Amy Storr and I am an instructional coach. And I'm also lead tech integration mentor in Montgomery, Texas. That's about an hour north of Houston. Uh, that is my email and um, my my Twitter handle, which is also good for Facebook and Instagram, is at Tech Amy S. So would love to get a follow from you. But that's just one example of the many that I'm going to share tonight on how you can use Buncee and its creation platform as an adult learner. I'm 40 and I love it. Just turned 40 in June. <laughs> All right. I'm going to save this one for last because I'm actually going to demo how to create this one. So let's start right here with this. So I love to create graphics in Buncee. I love to create them 
for campus or district signage for our websites or for newsletters or for trying to get the word out to our parents and families in our community. It's typically my go-to go -to tool to create those graphics. This is one that I created last year as a gift to my teachers. Each Christmas, I make my mother's famous fantasy fudge. Fun fact about that is all through my childhood, I thought that this was something my mother created from scratch. She added in magic to it and she just came up with it on her own. But it's actually the recipe on the back of a, um, oh gosh, the marshmallow cream um, products that you can get. It's still there today. It's called Fantasy Fudge. It's on the wrapper of that product, but it is the best fudge. And I've made it every year since I became an instructor coach. And so I sent an email out last year to let them know that the plate was in the lounge. And I added this into the email just to add some flair to my gift to my teachers. Right, this one um, is another type of graphic that we shared out, myself and my librarian, with remote learning that just started. So when we started this school year, we started our first few weeks back at school 100% remote. And so we knew that we wanted to um, be there for our families and for our parents, for our grandparents, for the older siblings that would be helping their younger siblings with their remote learning. And so we created this graphic. We also added our bitmojis into it uh, to share and push out to our families. We shared it on social media. We shared it in our school newsletter and our teachers also shared it through Seesaw. So just another way that you can make a graphic. I love the fonts and Bunsen. All right, moving on. This one is a Twitter banner. If you did not know, you can change the size of your Bunsies. When you're creating them, you can change it to the dimensions you're looking for. Um, they do, I, I wanna say just recently added the dimensions for places like Wakelet, um, but you can typically search and just type in Google, what are the dimensions of a Twitter banner? And it'll let you know. So you can customize your dimensions in Buncee and then you're able to upload that into places like Twitter, and that becomes your header image. So I created one kind of similar to my business card and created it so I could add it to my Twitter banner. And it just has info about me. It has my Twitter handle, um, a hashtag that I love, which is hashtag four o'clock faculty PLN, and then some of my ambassador stickers. So another way that you can use all their fun graphics and backgrounds, you can use it for your social media banners. All right, another example of how we have used it for district signage. So I created this, you can see all the way back in 2017, but we had a district-wide email change kind of smack dab in the middle of our school year. And so we wanted to push it out real quick to our parents and our families to let them know um, so they could uh, be aware of the change in that. So this is just another example of how I created a graphic in Buncee and used it to connect to our family. Another example of how you can use Buncee as an adult learner is if you have ever participated in Twitter chats before, I created this entire thing in Buncee. I was leading a, a Twitter chat, Buncee chat, and I put all my questions on a slide in Buncee, and this is what I pushed out during the chat. And of course, added my Bitmoji in there as well, because that's always fun. But you can use Buncee to create graphics for things such as Twitter chats. Uh, we talked about my business card. Um, another example of a graphic, if you are like me and you love to present at conferences, I love it and I miss it so much. This is the time that I get to see people like my Buncee peeps is when I go to conferences and sadly we haven't been, been able to attend them due to what's going on right now in our world. So I'm hoping that we get back to doing that soon so I can see all my friends that I only get to see sometimes once a year. And so this is a graphic that I made with my twin sister, all made in Buncee. Isn't that a cool background? My sister and I were presenting in San Antonio. And so this was a perfect background to share so people could see what our, our title was and to hopefully come and watch us. Um, just a great way to push your content out. And it's eye-catching. It's one of those things that people look at and want to look at again. Um, so that's Buncee to me. I always typically use it to create conference uh, graphics. Oh, this one's one of my favorite ones. So as an instructional coach, I do a lot of presenting on my campus and on my district. 
And so this was one that I did about something called book bentos, which uh, is one of my favorite things. I heard about it at a conference that I went to. And I think I have a picture of it. Let's see. There, see, there's that graphic I told you about. So this just goes through, and like I said, this is all made in Bunsing. This goes through um, kind of the history of book reports. There's the teacher. Book reports are due tomorrow. There's me, little bitmoji Amy, reading her book and enjoying it. And she hears her teacher say that, and then she throws it down, and then she's crying because she doesn't want to write a book report. She just wants to keep reading. And so this session goes through kind of the old school book report, which nothing's, there's nothing wrong with it, but it shows how you can elevate that and make it more engaging for your students. And so I talk about some really fun ones. Uh, book Bentos was inspired by, let's see if it's in here. Okay, right here, Lisa Highfill, who is like the hyperdoc queen. She's one of the, the creators behind that. I saw her at a conference and she shared this idea, uh, Book Bentos where, let me see if I can find a picture of it. Um, almost afraid you won't see my screen. So let me try to give you a visual. Uh, the way that she shared it was, is you put a book like Alice in Wonderland in the center of your table, the physical book, and then you find trinkets that summarize that book. So maybe it's a teacup. Uh, maybe it's a, a deck of playing cards. And they put all these trinkets around the book and it's the summary of the book. And so I reached out to, to Buncey. I was like, oh, this will be so cool to do in Buncey. And so what did Buncey do? They made bento boxes um, for kids to come and add the book in and add all the different pieces that summarize that book. So I used Buncey to create this entire presentation. I've given this presentation at the Buncey booth at different conferences and some other places. It's a great, it's a perfect tool to build your presentations in. Uh, another example of a presentation, this is one that I did for my district, all completely built in Buncey. What I love about Buncey is everything you need to build a Buncey is in Buncey. The fonts, the backgrounds, the cool furniture. I love the animated stickers, the QR codes. It's all inside here. And so I just built uh, my presentation for the district. I love how you can hyperlink images to different places. And so another idea of how you can use it for presentations. And then one more before I show you our final one. This is a graphic that we used um, right when remote learning started in March, but we continued using these graphics throughout. So when remote learning began, we knew that we were gonna have to give support, of course, to our teachers and our students, but we didn't wanna forget our parents. And so we started what was called Wednesday webinars, Parent PD. Every Wednesday we offered topics for parents to join us in on via Zoom. And we shared this graphic out through all of our district social media channels. We shared it with our teachers and staff so they could push it out to their parents. And it was just a great way to get the word out to let parents know, hey, there's this session coming up you, that might interest you. Here's some information to join us. So we used Bunsing uh, to create those graphics to push out. And you can see we did it all the way through May. Fun, fun, fun. And we're we would love to continue to offer that as well, too, since some of us are still in remote. All right. Before I show the last one, um, my Buncey peeps, is there anything that I need to answer now before I get to this? Or are we good to go? No, we're good to go. OK. All right. This is one of my favorites. So this is computer themed wallpaper. Um, so this is going to be the organizational part of this conversation is how to help you get organized. I have been seeing lots of really cool backgrounds, backgrounds that you can purchase on websites and you can add it to your background on your computer and it helps you organize all your folders. And I started thinking, well, wait a second, I can do this in my Buncey account. So I started, this was back in Easter of one year. I started during that month. I thought, okay, I'm going to add some boxes. I'm going to organize my folders into presentations, work, personal, and fonts and graphics. I love cool fonts and graphics. And so I would add whatever Buncey Man uh, theme that I needed for that month. And so it's Easter. So I added Buncey Man as an Easter bunny. And then I put an inspirational quote, which is also something you can find in Buncey and their messages and added that in another box. And then I would, like I said, organize my folders. So here's just a preview of some of the many ones that I've created. And I change them every time. This is one. So this is May when summer starts. Might have been April. 
talking about rainbows. And then uh, maybe this one was back to school. Uh, Halloween, of course. Fall, Christmas with the holiday hugs graphic. Happy New Year, probably January. Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day. Um, this is one that I think I built during remote learning. Um, and then I got an idea because, you know, all the craze recently was the Bitmoji classrooms. Um, and I haven't really quite jumped on that bandwagon just yet. I think they're, they're pretty awesome. Um, I did one, but it's not as cool as some of the ones that I've seen. But I thought, let me make a Bitmoji scene for my desktop. So this is what I created. And I'm going to show you real quick in a second how you can do this. In your Buncee account. So what I did was I just created a classroom scene and added boxes to house all of my different folders. And this is what my desktop looks like. I took a picture today right before I got on. And you can see how I have all my different things organized into those little areas. Um, it's an organizational tool that keeps me sane. And um, I love having it all organized and pretty and streamlined. So I'm going to show you how to do this from your Buncee account. I actually really love that. There's so much like personalization in, you know, a device and we are stuck with our devices 24 seven right now because it's all remote. And just the fact that you can kind of make it yours is just so special. I've seen these pictures you know, on Instagram from, from, you know, I guess youngsters, <laughs> um, <laughs> about them like personalizing their phones, like their backgrounds with their own like desktop organizers. Um, so I think it's, it's just like a really great way to kind of bring your own, like highlight who you are and have, yeah. you know, your device be a part of you, I guess. Um, so I really love it. Yeah. I'm really excited to see how you created. Yeah. I'm excited to show you. So I'm going to start in my Buncee account. And I'm gonna go, you can go to one of two places, create a new Buncee here or up here at the top where it says create. 3.0 is the way to go. Um, so you will come here and this is your creation canvas. So this is where you can find a template. Um, you can see some example templates down here. They're templates ready to go for you or you can start from scratch, which is my favorite. And then we talked about earlier how you can resize. And so that is right here, resize canvas. And you're able to find some pre-made dimensions or you can do custom. And like I said, they have some dimensions you might be looking for here, recommendations. Um, so check that out if you're looking to use that resize tool. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a title. And let's get to creating. I love to start with the background. And so I'm going to find um, just some floor. Let's see. Oh, I like this one. Let's go with, I'm going to do this one. So I, and they just added these recently when the Bitmoji craze started happening. That's the cool thing about Buncee. They see what's, what's, what's up in, and popular with the kids and even the adults. And they really do work hard to listen to that and add. So there is my background. And now I'm going to... I'm gonna add my boxes first. I'm just gonna add two today just for time purposes. And then I'm gonna put in my, my classroom scene. So you're gonna, you can click this plus sign right here or this one, they both do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna click here and now I'm going to go find some frames. You could also use the shape tool. That's perfectly fine. I wanna say the way that I built these was I went and found a frame. So these are all the different assets that you can use. Uh, tons of them. Animation is my favorite. I love the stickers. I'm going to go in the stickers. I'm going to go find me a frame. Search tool is awesome. But what else is pretty cool about Buncee is their categories to the left. And I love how they added the pictures for the categories. Um, way back in the day, it was just words. It would just say the word book. And so think about our littles, um, maybe some of our non-readers that were looking for a specific category. Just by adding those visuals, it helps so much. For our kids so there is a frame background or you can type in frame here now i'm going to go find a fun square how about this one and you can select more than one more than two if you wanted to now i'm going to add it into my scene 
I'm going to move it around, make it a little bit bigger. How about just like that? I'm going to come over here and move this one. I kind of like to offset them a little bit like I did the other one. So maybe it's not the same size. Maybe it's not even with it, and that's okay. So this is going to be where I'm going to put my folders after I make it my desktop background. So maybe now you want to label your frames. You see that plus sign went away. That's because this one does the same thing. So now I'm going to add some text. And I'm going to just say, how about personal? You can highlight that and change the font. I love this new one. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to move it right here. Now, to make it easy, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to duplicate it and come over here and just call it professional. We're going to make it a tiny bit smaller so it fits. There we go. So now I have my boxes for me to put all my different folders in. Now I'm going to quickly add a, like a classroom scene. So let's find a desk. I'm going to use the search feature here and it searches all of the assets from here. I'm going to add, um, let's do this one. There's a desk. Put it right there. Now I'm going to find a person. You could add your Bitmoji if you wanted to. Buncee surprised me one time and made, turned me into a, an avatar. And so I have my own personal avatar here in Buncee. If you type in the word Amy, you will find me. So I'm going to add that into my scene. Now, if you notice, if I add her on top of that desk, it covers the computer. So maybe I want her to be behind the desk. Watch, all you have to do is reorder these pictures and it changes the layers. You can also click on an object and click either to front or to back and it does the same thing. Make her a little bit bigger. Let's add one more thing. Let's add a chair and then we're gonna call it a day. Um, oh, I like this one. It's very lifelike. There is my computer desk chair. I actually would love to have that actual chair in my room. <laughs> That looks super comfortable. And I'm going to push that one to the back. So it's behind the desk. And now you have kind of a semi-finished desktop background to add to your computer. Now, if you wanted to add it to your desktop, it depends on your computer that you have, but you want to download it as a picture. So I'm going to show you two options on share. Um, the download feature, which is right here. Uh, PDF, of course, is an option, or you can add, you can do it as an image, which is what, what I do. If you just click it, it will download automatically to your computer, which is nice. And then you're able to then add it as a background on your computer. Uh, last time that they did the idea clock, they got some feedback that some were very interested in knowing how to share templates with users. So I'm going to show that to you real quick. Up here at the top, so once again, I came up here where it says share and share with Buncee users. And you've got two options. If you have classes in your Buncee account, so if you created a template for your kids to use, you would click from your classes. You would find the class you want to share it to. Let's just choose this one. You can then choose specific people or select all. And that will be shared with all of them. And once you click share, it's going to go to their Buncee account. And they have a tab in their account. And um, Edith, correct me if I'm wrong if I say this wrong, but I think it says shared with me. They click it, and then yes. that's where they can see anything that's been shared with them. And once they touch it, um, they should see, I think it's three buttons, copy, edit, maybe another button. <laughs> it's two. Maybe it's just copy it's and two. edit. <laughs> <laughs> you got the lot. Kids can get it and they can make it their own. Then you as a teacher can go into your account and you can see all the bunsies your kids have made if you're taking it for grade or you're looking for completion. And then your other option is um, other Buncee users. So it's you know other people that use Buncee, teachers on your team or in your building or teachers in your district. Um, so that's how you can share uh, your Buncee, Buncee creations with them. 
I have to say, this is so awesome because I mean, if I could share my screen, you would see my entire desktop is actually filled with everything that I just dragged in. So it's such a great <laughs> idea. I mean, just to like think about how everybody nowadays, you know, you kind of get lost now that everybody's kind of home at this point, mm -hmm. but you know, like you need that structure. So I love yeah. how you're just like thinking outside the box and like, and not just using it just for the class, but also just on a personal sort of um, approach to get yourself organized and even for your kids too. Yeah, like I said earlier, I I, I discovered this um, after I had students. And so I really do utilize it um, as an adult learner and as an instructional coach. And I do so much of what I do for myself and then creations for other people is, is made in Buncee. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of a tool that helps me feel creative at 40. Oh, so. Well, thank you. I mean, honestly, we're so appreciative of all of the different things that you guys are doing, too. I mean, uh, for one, I didn't even think of this idea. So I love like hearing all of the different thoughts that everyone has. But I know, Suj, um, I, I think you had a question before about just like all of the different ways that Amy was creating. Yeah. Um, so from the Bunsy board that you shared, you know, there were a lot of ideas on there, like book bentos and business cards and your organizers. And I just wanted to ask, like, how did you come up with these ideas and where did you get that inspiration from? And, you know, what are some tips? So actually, those are a lot of questions. <laughs> so let me clarify. So question number one, how did you come up with these ideas? And question number two is how is if you have a tip? Um, for anyone who's getting started on Buncee, what would you tell them, you know, uh, how how can they get inspired to start creating on Buncee? So a lot of my ideas, I mean, a lot of the majority of them come from inspiration from others, like hearing Lisa Highfield talk about the book bentos and immediately my brain went to Buncee. I was like, oh, wait a second, we could do this in Buncee. And that's typically how most of these go. I'll hear an idea. And then my first thought is, this can be done in Buncee. I'll hear another idea. Oh, this can totally be done in Buncee. And then I just jump in. And the cool thing about Buncee is you can, and, and this is a cool thing, you can totally get lost in it and just create. And sometimes you just come up with things based on just tinkering around, like much like we want our kids to do when they're in the classroom is just to play around with something. And, uh, and ideas are sure to spark, right? So a lot of times it's it's shared by others. And then, mm -hmm. like I said, or it's just something that I have a need for um, that I know for sure I can make in Buncee. And then that's kind of where it happens. That's yeah. where it happens. Yes. <laughs> I have to say, I do the same thing where when I'm creating, it's just like I'm just playing around, trying to see like what to do. And mm -hmm. most often I actually start creating and I think it's going to go a different way. And then I yeah. discover a new sticker in real truth. <laughs> and I'm like, actually, I kind of want to work around this one instead. Oh, gosh, my lights just went out. Hold on. <laughs> so for too long, that's why. But in the meantime, I have to say the darkness actually made the, the background have like another cool like feel to it. <laughs> It had a I love it. But yeah, I mean, it's so cool that for me to be able to also just hear how like you just like come up with an idea and think that you're able to also deliver it on Buncee. So I love the kind of creative side that you bring to the whole table. Oh, and, and that's that's totally Buncee. Buncee that brings it out in everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, certainly for myself, I always talk about my favorite book that I printed on Buncee, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I love just like the idea of just like creating things and then also just using it for personal use. Yes. Um, yeah, I loved all the ideas that you shared. Um, Suj, I don't know if you had other questions that you wanted to highlight here. Um, well, actually, while we're sharing ideas, something that I wanted to share is, you know, I've personally been using Buncee to kind of uh, capture everything that I'm reading right now. So that's just like another great way for, you know, to, to use Buncee. Like there's just uh, so many, so many ways for uh, adult learners, for learners, for uh, your personal use. So it's all very exciting. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for sharing, you know, your experience with Buncee as well. It's so insightful and it's it's also so creative uh, to see everything that you've done. So I can only say thank you, Amy. Thank you. For <laughs> You're your welcome. Time. Thank you. <laughs> no, and we echo the same thing. I mean, someone just said um, too that um, they love the fact that even something so simple as like a URL, being able to hyperlink it and have it all in one place, it's definitely mm -hmm. helpful. Yeah. Um, in that sense too. But honestly, Amy, thank you so much for all the different ideas. I mean, I'm really inspired. There's so many different things that you can actually create with. And I love the fact that you've actually been creating for, you know, what you said, five years. 
It's crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is my. <laughs> That's I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is my fifth year as a coach. Um. So yeah, I mean, it's been since my first year as a coach. Yep. Wow. Well, I'm glad that Buncee can support you in that way. But yeah, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and your ideas. And for everyone um, who was able to listen and tune in here, um, we just wanted to also share uh, just a link to a feedback form. So thank you for tuning in to our second idea clock session, um, meant to be a light conversation about just different ideas that hopefully you can benefit from and take back to your class, especially um, you know, knowing that your class might actually be brick and mortar style or even in a remote sort of setting. But on the screen, you'll notice the feedback form. It's bit.ly slash bunc0923. Um, if you'd like to please just share your feedback with us, your ideas and other things that you'd like to learn about, um, be, feel free to uh, fill that in. And with that, thank you again, Amy. It's really such a pleasure. And thank you, Suj. It's great to see you even in a remote environment here. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I have to. I had to turn my video <laughs> off because my computer was lagging like crazy, so. <laughs> yeah, it's a new world that we find ourselves with. Everybody uh, is now on the internet. But yeah, so thank you to everyone for tuning in and we'll catch you next time. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.